Are you tired of being hurt and disappointed by friends and family? Well, here's two things you can do. Number one, stop opening up your heart. If you want to never again experience the hurt and pain of grief, loss, and betrayal, then just stop opening up your heart to others. Number two, if you're tired of being hurt and disappointed, retreat. If you want to ensure that you'll never again endure hurt and pain at the hands of a family member or friend, then just retreat. Wrap yourself in a little tight cocoon. Lock yourself away in a safe place by posting signs about the three directions that describe the boundaries behind which you will hide. Me, myself, and I. If you've been around the block a few times in this unforgiving world, you know that love is tough. That fact comes as no newsflash to you. You've probably experienced love at some point in your life as a pinnacle of human emotion that caused you to soar into the sky, floating your way through life. You probably have also experienced the flip side of love when you hit the rock bottom of despair, crashing on the rocks at the bottom of the cliff. Of course, not all hurt and pain is caused by love, but much hurt and pain happens as a part of what it means to love and be loved because love is tough. It's also true to say that hurt and pain is multiplied, and the possibilities of hurt and pain is multiplied. And the degree to which that hurt and pain will be experienced is multiplied when love is part of the equation. Authentic and true love is always tough. Thankfully, that doesn't stop people from loving in the human realm. And as far as God's love, well, divine love endures forever. Love endures because love is worth the pain and suffering and loss that we risk when we love on the human side of love. If and when you fall in love with another, the decision you make to give your heart to them also means when you do that, it is inevitable that they, the object of your love, whom you see as perfection personified, will one day hurt you in ways no one else can, because as wonderful and perfect as that person may seem to you to be, and as wonderful as they will turn out to be, they are only human, they are not perfect, they will let you down. If you become a parent, that little bundle of joy will one day break your heart. In fact, your little bundle of joy will break your heart many times. And turn that around. The parent whom you as a child come to respect, love, and admire, is also an imperfect human. And there will be times when your mom or dad will fail to match the honor you feel you give them and the high regard in which you feel you hold them. Love is tough. Hi, I'm Greg Albrecht. A warm welcome to one and all to the audio teaching ministry of CWR. Christianity Without the Religion on the first Sunday of the month, as well as during other special times of the year, we use physical symbols and language to symbolize, by way of reminder, the mysterious and beautiful truth of the unifying love we have in and with Jesus Christ by God's grace. If you wish to literally join us for what we call normally communion, other people call it Eucharist, the Mass, Lord's Supper, you'll need a small piece of bread and perhaps a small container, an ounce or two of red liquid. But you can still join us without those physical elements, for in some cases, depending on where you are, it might be inconvenient or even unsafe for you to literally join us. Most of the time, we receive communion before the sermon, but today we're going to reverse that and receive Jesus, the bread of life, at the end of our sermon. So again, welcome to the audio teaching ministry of CWR. Most of all, we want you to know that you are safe here at CWR. This is an oasis of grace.
If you are a visitor and you remain with us for a while, you're going to discover that here at the Audio Teaching Ministry of CWR, we place a great deal of emphasis and weight on God's grace and love. God's love carries the day for us. It carries the week, it carries the month, it carries the year, it carries our lives for us. If you are inclined to believe that the grace and love of God is just a bunch of sloppy and syrupy sentimentalism because some religious authority told you that, you may want to walk out the door right now. I hope you don't, but you're going to get what you think have been told to think, indoctrinated to think, is sloppy and syrupy sentimentalism today. We're not into hellfire and damnation and condemnation preaching and teaching. We're not into condemnation and judgment because Jesus never was. And he certainly isn't right now. Here at CWR, we believe in a similar thing that was proclaimed by four of my favorite theologians, the Beatles, those great theologians from Liverpool, who insisted, all you need is love. Another song from 50 years or so ago advised that we should, quote, all get together and try to love one another right now. Our message is, Love is tough, based on 2 Corinthians 6, verses 11 through 13. Before we read that passage, let's pray together. Dear God in heaven, as we learn and search and come to know more of your love today and this week, we pray for the authenticity, humility, and honesty of Jesus, that we may fully know your love as real and as tough, rather than simply a nice, sweet, and frilly idea. We pray that you will lead and inspire us today to know a little more of the unsearchable riches and dimensions of your love and grace, and that you will so live in us in Christ that your love would be part of who we are in such a way that we share that love with others. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 is our keynote passage, verses 11 through 13, 2 Corinthians 6, verses 11 through 13. Paul says to the Corinthians, We have spoken freely to you, Corinthians, and opened wide our hearts to you. We are not withholding our affection from you, but you are withholding yours from us. As a fair exchange, I speak to you as my children. Open wide your hearts also. This is the second letter Paul wrote to his Corinthian brothers and sisters, and here in verse 11 of chapter 6 is the only time that Paul calls them Corinthians. In these three verses, Paul pours out his heart to his Corinthian friends, to his Corinthian spiritual family, to, as he calls them, his Corinthian children in the faith. Paul boldly declares how he really feels about the Corinthians. He tells them he has opened his mouth wide, and he's told them honestly and authentically how he feels, and he tells them he has opened wide his heart. This plea from Paul is an emotional request, a hope that the Corinthians will return his affection to and for him. And even while he chides them, in verse 12 of our passage, for withholding their affection for him, he pleads with them to open wide their heart in exchange for the love he has professed and announced. These three verses in our keynote passage here in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 11 through 13, offer a little window into Paul's life, a peek into one of those times when he found out by bitter experience, and he's already found out, as it turns out, as he's writing this, that love is tough. Paul asks the Corinthians to love as they have been loved by him and, of course, by God. The first step in love, as Paul is describing, as Paul, in fact, modeled for us, and as God says, he treats us in the same way, is as our saying goes colloquially, quote, putting oneself out there, end quote. 
The first step in love is risking the reality that your feelings may not be returned equally, and perhaps they won't even be returned at all. One of the foundational reasons love is tough has to do with the vulnerability we express to the individual we love. We open our heart to them. When we love someone, we open up, we take a risk, and love is a risk. We risk that they will hold our trust in a safe and secure place, and they will never use any of the intimate or secret things they know about us against us. Come to think of it, isn't that a little bit of what happened when God in the person of Jesus became a human being? Didn't he take a risk? In fact, doesn't he still take risks by loving us? Now, some religious people refuse to believe in the full extent of God's love and grace because they really can't imagine that God would open himself up to us in such a way that we could take advantage of him. I assure you that when God tells us he loves us unconditionally, when he loves us first, when he puts himself out there for us when he takes a risk he knows we might in fact he knows we will because we're humans take advantage of his undying love i'm not saying we're dogs but if you have a dog and you love that dog very much you may train the dog to poop in your backyard or poop in a little place on you know next to your driveway or something but you know the dog's going to poop you know that well god knows we're going to poop God knows that we will take advantage of the relationship and we can never completely love him back in the way that he loves us and he doesn't expect that. When God draws us into his embrace and whispers his sweet grace into our ears, he is becoming vulnerable to us. If God wanted to remain safe from us, he never would have come down here to be in Christ, one of us, and with us, and for us. In 1965, Paul Simon, who combined forces with Art Garfunkel to make music as Simon and Garfunkel, wrote and performed the song, I Am a Rock. Here are some of the lyrics which describe the desperate attempt attempt of an individual to avoid the hurt and pain that come when one opens up their heart and loves another. A winter's day in a deep and dark December, I am alone, gazing from my window to the streets below on a freshly fallen silent shroud of snow. I am a rock. I am an island. I've built walls of fortress deep and mighty that none may penetrate. I have no need of friendship. Friendship causes pain. It's laughter and it's loving I disdain. I am a rock. I am an island. Don't talk of love. Well, I've read the words before. It's sleeping in my memory. I won't disturb the slumber of feelings that have died. If I never loved, I never would have cried. I am a rock. I am an island. The plaintive voice behind I am a rock advises not to talk of love, for after all, if we had never loved, we never would have cried. The lonely voice says, I have no need of friendship. Friendship causes pain. Love is tough. Because love invites us. In fact, beyond invites, love, true love, demands that we reveal who we are, our true self. True love demands that we come out of the shadows into the light. True love demands that we peel off all those protective masks that we wear. True love involves trusting the one we love to come behind the defensive lines that we build up to protect ourselves, and of course, when we do so, opening our hearts to another, the very nature of human relationship means that that trust that we give to that person 
will inevitably be violated. We will be betrayed. Because true love, tough love, is all about vulnerability. First, on the part of God, tough love is his vulnerability to us. He loved us first. We read that in 1 John. He made the first move. In the person of Jesus, he exemplified the fact that vulnerability is the birthplace of love. In Christ, God turned the world upside down. The world admires the kind of independent power and strength that resides with and is achieved by those who, like the lyrics of, I am a rock, exemplify, feel safe, secure, and successful apart from others. Jesus turned the world upside down when he, the Lamb of God, the creator of all that is seen and all that is unseen, willingly went to his cross in the ultimate demonstration of tough, vulnerable love. The cross of Christ is, after all, not a sword. The cross of Christ is not an offensive weapon. And the cross of Christ isn't a shield either. The cross of Christ is not a defensive weapon. Those who follow Jesus are not involved in the assertion of dominance or power. We neither are trying to be offensive to gain things that do not belong to us, nor defensive to protect all that we have or believe we have. Dominance and power is the way of Rome. The way of Jesus is vulnerability. Tough, vulnerable love on the part of God toward us is this. In Christ, God demonstrated that true courage is physical weakness. Vulnerability is the power of that baby born in Bethlehem. That was God in that cradle, in that crib. God, who chose to be as vulnerable as possible as he began his human life as God in the flesh. He started it as a vulnerable baby, not as an adult male who was 18 years or 21 years or 30 years of age. Vulnerability is the power of that baby born in Bethlehem. It's the power of another kind of life that death and the grave cannot destroy. Vulnerability is the birthplace of tough love. Tough, vulnerable love on the part of God towards us is this. In Christ, God loved us, and he still loves us in Christ. And that tough love on his part is his willingness to allow us to take advantage of the love he gives us. The vulnerable love of God means that he will go as far as he needs to, as long as he needs to, to relentlessly pursue us as a lover does his or her beloved. On our part, the love that God gives us is the vulnerability and courage to abandon all futile attempts to hide from God and all pretensions of trying to appear to our fellow human beings to be someone we are not. Vulnerability on our part is the mind of Christ living within us, empowering us to do the really uncommon thing, to admit that we're not perfect, that we're not in control at all. Vulnerability on our part means trusting in God to do for us what we can never do for ourselves. The tough and vulnerable love of God as it lives in us is the risen life of our Lord. And that means giving up our calculators and our measuring sticks, most of them religious calculators and religious measuring sticks that are used to help us live in denial used to help us live under the false illusion that God loves us because of who we are and what we do and how we keep him appeased and pleased. Join me now at the table of the Lord as we give thanks for the tough love of our Father in heaven, to whom we pray now. Dear God, we appear before you now at your table Thus laden with your love and grace, we receive the body of Jesus Christ, symbolized by this small piece of bread that we have, and the symbol 
of the blood of Jesus that we have before us. Thank you for your table. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus is our bread of life. He is our risen Lord. He lives in us, and we are his spiritual body, the universal body of Christ. And he lives in the lives of all those in that universal body who are Christ followers around this world. And now, as we receive him, we receive also all of our brothers and sisters in Christ in this world. We don't argue with them and tell them that we're better than them because we have better doctrines and better teachings. We don't call them heretics. We accept and embrace all that Jesus accepts and embrace, and we don't have that exact list, do we, before us right now, as the children of God. And we accept and therefore embrace our brothers and sisters in Christ in the universal body around this world. So receive now with me, my friends, my brothers and sisters in the Lord, his body, the body of our Lord. And in a similar way now, we lift the red liquid before us, which for us, we use as a symbol of the blood of the new covenant, the blood Jesus gave so that we might have the new covenant, and so that the old covenant would be terminated and become kaput and obsolete. We gaze upon this red liquid before us, and we ponder the life that Jesus gave for us, for indeed, he is risen, he is alive, and indeed, there is no greater love than laying down one's life for friends. And he called us his friends. We give thanks that we are his friends as we drink of this new covenant given to us in the blood of our Lord and Savior, the cup of the new covenant. Pray with me. Our Father in heaven, thank you for making yourself in your incarnation as Jesus, God in the flesh, vulnerable to us. Out of your vulnerability, out of your tough, vulnerable love, you invite us to follow you. To, as Jesus lives in us, be vulnerable to you, to be honest and open with you, and then to be vulnerable to our fellow human beings and to pass on that same tough, vulnerable love to others. And we may do that by your grace. Bless us, live in us, that we might show forth your glory, your goodness, and your grace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. What a priceless privilege it is to be with you, my friends. And you are my friends our friends here at Plain Truth Ministries and CWR, wherever you may be around this world. We can picture you in Australia and New Zealand. We picture you in Canada. We picture you in Mississippi and North Dakota and in Southern California and Northern California. In the state of New York and Ohio, we picture you in England and United Kingdom and Northern Ireland and in Scotland. We picture you in South Africa. We picture you in Nigeria. We picture you wherever you may be and you are around this world. Thank you for letting us know of your prayer needs, of your prayer requests. We do pray for you. Whether we know specifically of them or not, we are thankful to be of service to you, and we do that by God's grace. Thank you for praying that he will continue to allow us to do so. And speaking of continuing, join us next week for our message titled, More Than Fans. May God be with you, and bless you, and may you know more deeply than ever before of his tough, vulnerable love. Please join us on our website, www.ptm.org, for more spiritual nourishment that we provide through the many ministries and resources here at Plain Truth Ministries.